back to the traditional Thomas. For those of you who are tuning in for the first time, my name is Nicholas Cambasos, and I'm excited to announce five new series that are coming up on this channel uh, that I've been kind of molding over in my head uh, for the last couple of months, and I hope that you guys find beneficial and fruitful to your own spiritual lives. First and foremost, uh, as you guys might have seen, this last video that I put out uh, had to do with what I affectionately called the Summa Speed Run. And this is kind of a project that a friend and I are working on where we both get up super early in the morning before our normal day-to-day -day life. And we read through St. Thomas's Summa Theologica together, kind of just build a good friendship as well as wanting to know our faith more. And this has been something that's been very fruitful to both of our lives. It's really uh, benefited our own prayer lives, our own lives when it comes to contemplation, and then obviously when it comes to understanding what exactly the church teaches. Um, so I will be continuing to upload videos on that related subject uh, in the future. We're almost done with the prima par, so I'm feeling a little bit accomplished, uh, a little bit blessed uh, to have that <laughs> over. Uh, I don't know, again, because I'm you know, still reading through it all, again, 100% for the first time, but I have I'm going to guess that the Prima Pars, in my personal opinion, might be the hardest section of the Summa to read, just because he's going over, St. Thomas is going over a lot of things when it comes to angels and man and things along this nature that are uh, very heady, as opposed to maybe when we get to part three and we understand sacramentology and things along that nature. Uh, I might find that just to be a little bit easier for myself, of course. I don't know where everyone else is. Maybe you're out there and you find angels super understandable and the seven sacraments are much harder for you to understand. I don't know. Uh, but regardless, we will be putting out some videos on that related subject uh, in the future pretty soon. The second series that I'm wanting to put out is uh, a series that I'm going to call the Sunday Notes of St. Thomas Aquinas. The Sunday Notes of St. Thomas Aquinas are basically back in the 30s, 40s, and 50s, the Dominican order itself basically had lectures where they went over large swaths of the Summa Theologica on Sundays that related to the gospel and the epistle readings at Mass. And this is something that my own uh, edition of the Summa Theologica thankfully includes, uh, and I'd like to share that with you guys. So that series, um, you know, it, it covers a lot of different questions. For instance, we might be in like the second Sunday of Lent or something, and it might be talking about um, the importance of fasting, right? And so we'll be going over St. Thomas Aquinas' treatise on fasting, um, you know, and discussing that. And uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I really hope to have questions from you, the viewers, put them in the comment section, questions that you guys would really like um, maybe myself to answer. Maybe I can try to look it up in the Summa. I get an idea of maybe what St. Thomas Aquinas would say on these things. But anyway, just something that I think would enliven our spiritual life as we're going into 2022 together. So this series will be starting uh, the first Sunday of Advent. So coming up in about six or seven ish weeks or so. The third series, uh, you guys have kind of already gotten accustomed to, which is just our normal, regular interview um, broadcast, so to speak. Uh, we will be having a lot of interesting guests coming up in the future to talk about a whole range of issues. So far, we've mainly talked on this channel about um, things along the nature of the Latin mass. And that's definitely going to still be a major staple of this channel, as you're going to see in just a moment. Uh, but I don't want it to be the only thing that this channel is known for. Really, again, what the purpose of this channel is, is it's to promote the theology and philosophy of St. Thomas Aquinas. Um, and so whether that is doing that in the context of talking about the Mass, or whether that's the context of talking about angels, right? Uh, we want to make sure that we're covering every basis and not just talking about one subject. Though the Mass is the most important subject, um, I don't want to just fo solely focus on 
the Latin mass issue, if that makes sense. So we'll be having a lot of cool guests come on and give different thoughts. Wanted to also have a couple debates coming up in the future. Um, and so definitely be in prayer for me as we uh, try to get those things worked on. Number four, this is probably going to be the biggest series of this channel. This is something I've wanted to do for quite a long time, and I am pleased to announce that we're going to finally be able to do it. What I've wanted to do is to go, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, as many of you guys know, I'm a former Protestant. Uh, and Protestants, what they're, they're really good at doing, uh, and I'll give credit where due credit is due, is that they like to do what's called expositional or expository preaching. And what that is, is it's where they take a book of the Bible, say the gospel of, according to John, and they go verse by verse through the Bible and they expound on it, right? They, they teach what it means, they go through it, et cetera, et cetera. Well, what this series, uh, what I'm wanting to do is this is going to be kind of an exposition of the Summa Theologica. And so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going, starting from question number one in the prologue, going all the way to the second appendices in the supplement. And we're going to go through the commentaries that are available anyway, uh, Father Reginald Gerlou Lagrange, the great anti-modernist theologian of the 20th century. Um, and it's going to be, yeah, definitely a much more heady series, but something that I'm looking forward to do. Um, and so you'll typically get uh, maybe one or two episodes on that subject a week. I'm going to guess starting maybe in a week or two. Uh, I'm looking forward to this. It's going to be a, a, a very fun subject in series to do. Fifth and final, this is the most spicy, I guess, of all the topics that we're going to be going over, is uh, upcoming, I'm going to be doing a series that's going to be entitled A Thomistic Critique of the Novus Ordo, A Thomistic Critique of the Novus Ordo. And basically what we're going to be doing is going over a scholarly and Thomistic critique of the New Mass rubrics, the New Mass theology, and the fruits of the New Mass. And why I'm wanting to do this subject is not just because, again, as many of you guys know, I am a traditional Catholic, but I'm wanting to give um, a more, I guess, academically rigorous critique of the new mass, as opposed to some of the critiques that you find out there online. So one thing that I don't um, necessarily appreciate and that I'm not a huge fan of is that I've seen in general that a lot of the people who critique the new mass um, are typically people who, uh, and again, this is maybe just a stereotype that you see online. I don't see this as much in person, um, but in general, you see people, they will be showing conspiracy theories and they'll be showing um, kind of blog posts and random YouTube videos as sources of credential to criticize different things. And while those things maybe aren't 100% without merit, I definitely don't want to disclude anything that has merit in it. Um, those aren't really necessarily primary sources that I think are going to convince a lot of people to abandon the new mass and to go back to the mass of all time, the Latin mass. And so for me, what I'm, what I have found is that my own positions on the Latin mass and the new mass have formed through academically rigorous study of going back to the sources themselves of, okay, what, what was the new mass itself um, intended to do? What are the concilium team who are creating the new mass? What are their intentions? Who is Anibal Bunini and what were his intentions? What were the surrounding political issues that were going on at the time? What was the theology of these men who created this new mass? Was this Thomistic scholastic theology or was this resourcement and or neo-modernistic style theology? All of these questions. And so what we're going to be doing is going back to the sources themselves, to their own writings themselves, examining what they say, and tracing the history all the way from the beginning of the liturgical movement all the way until today, uh, and addressing these issues. Because in the age of, I guess now, post traditionis custodis coming out, uh, there's a lot of confusion. And there's a lot of different perspectives out there. You got people like myself who hold to the traditional mass. You have people on the other end of the spectrum who think that traditional mass is, you know, completely outdated and should be tossed. And you have a whole swath of people in the middle from, you know, reform of the reform crowd to, well, like, can we do the Anglican ordinate or, you know, I'm just going to go be an Eastern Catholic somewhere, right? There's a whole host of different perspectives, all that have varying amounts of merit in them. And so what I wanted to do is just merely have a more academically rigorous discussion when it comes to these things 
all within the bounds of charity um, and really look at the sources and see what do the sources say and what can we glean from them. Anyway, I hope that you guys will stick in and stay tuned for these episodes. I myself am looking forward to doing these things. For myself personally, I find that when I'm really getting to sit down and study uh, the theological texts themselves, I become alive and I really do enjoy it um, as opposed to uh, merely just interviewing people. There's nothing wrong with just interviewing people, but I kind of want to bring you guys along this journey that I have been on myself as I've been going back to these books and looking through these things and trying to understand these things myself. And so I hope that you join me. Uh, It would definitely be an honor to have you. Anyway, as always, I hope you guys are doing well. May our Lord bless you, our Lady keep you, and St. Joseph watch over you. God bless.